Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at the Simpsons rule. This is a, another topic in the further applications area and volume of the general 2 HSC course. Um, Alright, Simpsons rule. If you have not seen this rule before, it's actually not too hard. It might look complicated, but it's pretty easy. Um, basically, you were given this rule, uh, which again, it looks a little bit strange, but actually it's pretty easy to, to, to sort of uh, work out. I do it slightly different. Um, I look at it as the H over 3 or the height. Now the height, I might as well do this as I'm going, is the constant width. Okay, it's the constant width or the same width of your particular shape. Um, you just basically, sometimes it's like a width or a height, but it's that same number across ways and that will make more sense as we go through. Then we look at the first value plus 4 times the middle value plus the last value. And your formula pretty much reflects what I've written. Um, DF is the d distance of the first, DM is distance of the middle, and DL distance of the last. But I guess I've just watered it down just slightly. Now, what is the Simpsons rule and why do we need it? Why do we use it? Okay, so what we've looked at so far is area formulas of basic shapes like rectangles, triangles, uh, trapeziums, parallelograms, all those sorts of things. Um, if you're on a farm, you've got a big area that you want to find the area of, a big field kind of thing, it might not be exactly like those shapes. So you can see here that we have like an irregular boundary. Um, we have kind of like, had like a rectangular uh, rectangle there, but it got these rectangles irregular boundary, therefore having an irregular sort of area. So Mr. Simpson came up with this cool little rule that use, and I'm going to use this word estimate, which we should all know quite well by now, because this format does not give the exact area, it gives an estimate of the area. Um, I could ex go ahead and explain how you get the formula. You don't really need to know that. I do have some other uh, episodes on, on how to actually get the Simpsons rule. That's more a two unit sort of concept where it comes from. You just need to know how to use it. So the best thing for me to do to explain this rule and how to use the rule is of course to go through an example. A lake forms a boundary for a block of land as shown. Apply the Simpsons rule to approximate the area of the block. Answer correct to the nearest square meter. So once again, we're going to look at that rule. H over 3, we've got the first plus 4 times the middle value plus the last value. Sometimes people like to do first plus the last and then do plus four times the middle. It's up to you and what you want to do. Now, as I mentioned before, probably the uh, the more challenging part of this formula is working out what that H value is. Now, I mentioned before that H is that constant value, value or the constant width or the constant height. So you have a couple of options here. Look, we've got these numbers 20, 23, 22, they're not constant, they're not the same value, so that's not going to be our H value. So I'm going to look at the height of this lake, or the width of this lake, and you can see that these two spots here, they're pretty even, right? They look like the same distance. So that whole lot there is 36, so each part there is going to be 18 meters. Therefore, that becomes our constant H. So I'm going to put that 18, where the H is over 3 and then we have you can see the first value that's the last value so we've got 20 for the first value we've got 22 for that last value and then we've got a middle value so we're doing 4 times the middle value of 20 which is 23 once I've got that, guys, it is then a fairly simple process of typing those values into your calculator. Once again, remember, this is an estimation. Um, so you are finding an approximate area. You are not finding the exact area. And generally speaking, your Simpsons rule will always be in meters unless otherwise stated. So in this case, we have 804 meters squared for our actual area. So that's not too hard, right? Not too hard. Now, they can get a bit more challenging. Sometimes we do more than one application of Simpsons Rule, which we'll look at shortly. Actually, no, we'll look at now. Look at that. So example eight. Use the Simpsons Rule twice 
to estimate the area of ABCD to the nearest square centimeter. We're actually going to do these two different ways. We are going to do what it's asked for, for which is twice. I'm then going to show you how you could do it once and then show you the difference between them. So for this one, again, I've got my area equals my H over 3. We've got the first plus 4 times the middle value or values and plus our last value. Okay, so area equals. Now, my height. Now, we're going to do two applications of this. So that means basically that I'm going to split this shape into two. So you can see here that line there is pretty much about halfway. So I'm going to split that into half, and what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using Simpson's rule for this one here to start off with, and I'm going to do a second application for that side. So it's kind of like having two questions in one, all right? Kind of like when we're doing those composite areas. So for my first area, you can see that the whole lot across here is 36. So if I've got four pieces, that must mean that each piece of those or each width there is going to be nine because 9 falls a 36. So my constant height you can see here is going to be 9 over 3. Then I've got my first which is 22 plus 4 times the middle value which is 46 plus 60 is my last value. So that's going to give me an approximate value and sometimes we can use that little symbol that means approximately equal to and that's going to give me a, a value for the uh, the area of that particular left hand section. Um, again make sure you do four lots of the middle there sometimes we forget to do that and obviously that uh, will give you an incorrect response but if I do that I'm going to come up with 798 meters squared. Now that's my first area. I'm going to put that as A1, just like we did with the composite values last lesson. I'm now going to do area 2. So this is the second application. We've still got 9 here over 3. Now my first value will be this 60, and that was the last value of the previous one. So that's okay. I can use that twice. Four lots of the 58, because that's my middle, and then I've got the 48 there for my last value. And once again, we're going to chuck that into the calculator to let that get us an approximate value for the area of that right-hand side. I'm just going to make sure I type these in uh, correctly. And then that is going to provide me with 1,020 square meters. Therefore, the last step is just to add those two values together, just like we did with the composite ones, to get 1,000. 818 meters squared. Okay, so that's looking at two applications. Now, I could have just done one application if that's what the question has specified. Um, the difference there would be, I don't have much room, um, but what I'd be still have my 9 uh, over. Sorry. Just recap that. I was about to do that wrong. That was the two unit method, sorry. So if I was doing one application, we'd have our first here, our last here, and this would be our middle. Therefore, my height here would be 18. So I'd actually have 18 over 3 times the first, which is 22, plus 4 times the middle, which would be 60, plus the 48 there. Now that would be much less accurate, as you can imagine. I'm going to type into my calculator and do my 18 over 3. We've got the 22 plus the 4 times the middle, which is the 60, uh, plus the 48 at the end. And that would give us an approximate value of 1860 square meters. That would be one application as opposed to the two applications. And the second one, obviously, is the more accurate one because I've split up into smaller shapes. Um, okay, so look at the next one. Please have a crack at this one yourself. Pause it and then see what you can come up with. Okay, welcome back. A uniform cross section of a sculpture is shown opposite. The height of the sculpture is 30 centimeters. Apply the Simpsons rule twice to estimate the area of the cross section which is obviously this sort of area inside here. Um, and then the height would be like that. That's the 30 centimeters or the 0 0.3 meters. It would be like that kind of shape. Um, 
and subtract to the nearest square metre. So for part A, we've got our h over 3. We've got our first plus 4 times the middle plus our last value. Okay, so we're doing two applications. I'm actually going to do this in sort of one hit to show you what you could do. So our height, well, if I'm doing two applications, I'm going to cut this in half like that, which means my height is going to be uh, well, 8 divided by 4 is 2 meters there, 2 meters there, 2 meters there, and 2 meters there. So my height is going to be 2 over 3. Then I've got my first value. Now, see how there's no value there? Great. I'm glad we had a question like this. There is no value, therefore the value is just 0. The middle value is the 2. So I've got 4 times the 2 meters. And the last value here is that 2.2 meters. I'm now going to add on the next one. This is what I mean by doing it in one hit. My h is still 2 over 3. My first value is now the 2.2 plus 4 times my middle value of 5 plus my last value of 2.1. So you can do two individual values or you can just try and chuck it into a calculator in one hit. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. Just make sure that uh, if you choose this method, that you make sure your calculations are exact. Otherwise, you could be in a little bit of strife, obviously, and you don't want to make silly errors, um, obviously, and get those wrong. So I'm just typing those in as we speak. Um, once again, I've said before, make sure you get those four times the middle, not just the middle. Um, but if I do all that correctly, we should come up with 23 meters squared and hopefully that's correct now that's for part a I did that in one hit part B which is a really common HSC question which says what is the volume of the sculpture now you will come across a separate formula for the volume using Simpson's rule however this one's slightly different remember the volume for a prism is the area of the cross-section times the depth of the height or how far it goes back in this case, we've just found the area, which is 23 meters squared. We're told in the question that the height or the depth is 0 0.3 meters. Okay, make sure you both put it in meters. And then I'm simply multiplying those together to get my answer. And my answer in this case will end up being uh, 6.9 meters cubed. And that's approximately equal to... Alrighty. Uh, look, I hope this made sense, guys. I hope all those answers were correct. Um, any questions, please let me know. Have a crack at I think it's exercise one, uh, 2C, sorry, from the textbook we're using. Any questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, have a fantastic day, and I hope this made some sort of sense to you.